Hi guys and welcome to this uh, edition of the American Civil War in 28mm. Uh, in this edition I'll be looking at the 5th New Hampshire State Volunteers of the Army of the Potomac. Uh, the 5th New Hampshire were uh, a well-renowned, uh, well-respected regiment. They have the distinction of having lost more casualties uh, f of any Union regiment, cavalry, infantry um, or artillery. They lost 1,051 men uh, dur during the war as casualties, which is quite astounding if you think that the average company strength um, at the time of Gettysburg was sort of anywhere from 250 to 450 men, not company, sorry, um, regiment strength. So, you know, you consider that the people were, were marching around in regiments of two or three hundred at that time, uh, you know, these guys lost 1,050 throughout the war, which is, is, is incredible. Um, so that's, that's the thing, that's their claim to fame, uh, the 5th New Hampshire. Um, they were part of Caldwell's Brigade, which is the 1st Brigade, 1st uh, Division, 2nd Corps, which became Hancock's Corps. Uh, they fought in all the major battles of the war, and Gettysburg, obviously, but they fought at Chancellorsville, Antietam, um, Fredericksburg. Uh, yeah, so they were engaged everywhere, Petersburg, uh, Cold Harbor, you know, they, they, they really did sort of um, see the war uh, from every angle. Um, and. Uh, they performed well. Uh, there wasn't really a battle where they performed badly. Uh, they always did their job, uh, and um, yeah, they performed really well. So the figures I've used are Perry's. I got them from the Battle in the Box set. Uh, interestingly, in the Battle in the Box set, you get this style of figure, which is sort of marching, shouldered arms, and then you get right shoulder shift figures and some other types of poses, which are very good as well. Um, I did find these figures slightly more difficult to use uh, to make them look all different or as different as I possibly could because you know I like my units to look dynamic like they're actually moving and so I did have to work out how to do that a little bit um, but by using historical photographs and my knowledge of the Civil War I know there was a lot of slouch hats as you can see these guys are wearing civilian slouch hats um, and I've, I've thrown some shell jackets in there. New Hampshire wasn't really known for its shell jackets like uh, New York was and, and other states. But um, I did that for the reason that it got, it got me sort of these particular poses with the sort of um, left leg forward. So that it stands next to a guy, right leg forward, um, right leg forward, uh, you know, so it, they just look like they're doing things different. It's, it's a sacrifice I was happy to make. Um, it's not anything that I'm going to worry about because I also wanted the blanket roll going the other way. So this guy would typically be a Confederate or a, a New York um, volunteer. Um, but again, it, it's allowed me to um, have the figures in poses I want. Um, and it's allowed the unit to look a lot more dynamic by doing that. So that's the reason I did it. Um, and again, because I do research, I do a lot of research, you can see the slouch hats. This is a US uh, engineer detachment. And you know, the, the guys are wearing slouch hats, civilian hats, they're not even the same slouch hat. They're just whatever they could get, or you know, were sent from home or brought with them. They're more comfortable, um, protect them from the sun more. So yeah, that's, that's why I, I'm wearing slouch hats. An interesting note, if it's the Army of the Potomac you're doing, I would recommend one slouch hat to six figures. Uh, if it's the Army of the West, uh, Union Army, I would recommend um, the other way around. I'd, I'd recommend, you know, one sort of kepi to uh, six slouch hats. They, they really were that different. The Army of the West tended predominantly to wear slouch hats and the Army of the East tended to wear kepis. But both had kepis and slouch hats. But a good mix of both gives you a better looking regiment, I think. So. The blue that I've used is Prussian blue. Um, I've gone dark with it then, come light with it. Uh, they're all wearing the club design on the hat, on the kepi, I should say, not the hat, uh, which I've done with three dark red dots and then three light dots. And if you do it very carefully, it really does, you know, I mean, these guys are big on your screen, but uh, when, when you see them in 28mm, you, you, they do just look like the, the proper club 
design which was the marking for second core uh, Hancock's core at the time of Gettysburg um, so and, and before Gettysburg it was the Union Army adopted the core markings on the hats again not every soldier carried them not every every sort of regiment adopted them but they were meant to uh, some of them did put them on slouch hats and um, so there's a few like that and, and a few occasionally wore them on their breasts of their coats as well so it gives you a bit of scope to sort of uh, play around with um, so as you can see the guys here I've tried to get them to all look like they're marching along I've altered a few head shapes um, chucked in a few slouch cats had some muskets at different angles different gates and um, strides so that they look like they're, they're walking they're following along in the column they, they wouldn't march and step over ground like this you couldn't do it so they're not on parade this is like a, a route march and that's what I've tried to um, try to do so hopefully that's come out okay um, so looking from this angle you can see that there's there's muskets at different angles um, heads heads looking different directions and the, the gates and strides of them all are different so they, they I hope I hope they look like they're sort of shuffling along which is the, the look I was kind of trying to get um, I've gone for a plain Union drum I'll explain why in a minute um, so yeah in the in the by altering the position you stick the arm on you can alter the angle that the muskets at so you can break up the, the bayonets a little bit and have them slightly different angles uh, which is pretty standard um, and it just gives it a little bit more dynamism I suppose uh, so this is the third New Hampshire uh, these these guys are all real soldiers from the war this is an original photograph you see the drummer here is wearing a straw hat his drum is plain um, the officer is wearing a shell jacket. They had to pay for their own jacket, so he obviously preferred a shell jacket. The guy next to him is wearing a square buckled um, belt. Um, where he's got that from, I don't know. Because uh, the, 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 the standard US ones were oval, so this could be a state one. Uh, then you've got some of them are wearing the breast uh, buckle, which was attached to the uh, ammunition box. Uh, but again, there's only three guys in the whole unit wearing that. Um, I think that one looks like a buckle actually, but there's three guys wearing that. They're probably veterans of the unit, or probably in, you know, or, or in another unit that, that was issued with those. This small company uh, is, is formed up, and this 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 is the way the unit looks. You've got two with slouch hats on. Uh, this guy's got black leatherized gaiters. These two have got white or sort of cream colored gaiters. This guy's rolled his trousers up. Um, and this this is just one small company formed up and you can see the differences amongst the men so although they look uniformed they look quite ununiformed as well sort of thing they look a little bit disheveled and that's kind of what I'm trying to do when I paint my figures so my figures will look uniformed but look a little bit uh, disheveled as well that's, that's the look I'm going for um, hence the musket angles and the, the, the slouch hats and stuff you can see there the club design that one's quite clear so uh, the officer hasn't got any shoulder epaulets on and that's because I found evidence that a lot of Union officers didn't wear them. Uh, quite often they were promoted from the ranks and they had to physically get hold of some shoulder epaulets, shoulder bars, sorry. Um, and a normal second lieutenant didn't have any design in the bar, he just had the square, the, the inside was, was, was empty. And I've got original photographs of these guys and some of them have not got the shoulder um, bars on so I decided on a couple of my officers throughout the army not to, not to put them on just to represent that and you can see the spread of uh, slouch hats throughout the unit you know, it's about one every six and I think it looks it looks pretty good looks about right uh, the angle of some of the arms looks good so they're not all identical um, the flags are the GMB flags which I've mentioned before absolutely stunning uh, 5th Regiment New Hampshire State Volunteers and they, you just, you know, for me personally for the extra sort of uh, 50p or a pound, whatever they are awesome, when you put them together just trim the edge in whatever colour it is so you can't see any white paper edges together and that's what they do, that's all they need absolutely stunning so the rear shot shows um, the rear of the guys, and the Union, you know they're issued with the kit and there was real, no, no real shortage of normal equipment to, for, for these kind of troops, these, these sort of frontline troops. 
So they would have had cartridge boxes all the same, the blanket, the oiled um, rubberized blanket roll all the same, uh, the socks they were issued. Uh, there wasn't a massive shortage of socks. I mean, you may have had the odd different colored pair of socks sent from home, but basically all the socks were this kind of color, uh, oatmeal -y color. Some used to tuck them in, especially when the bottom of the trousers got raggy. So again, I didn't want to sort of change too much on that. Um, and the water bottle covers came in three basic colors, blue, uh, light blue, sorry, um, gray and brown. So what I decided is that one brigade will have blue, one brigade will have brown, and one brigade will have um, uh, brown. And then that way when I'm looking at them from behind on the tabletop, I'll be able to instantly see what brigade they're part of. Uh, and it just breaks it up a little bit, I suppose. Um, but th like I say, these, these kind of things were, were kind of issued, so there's not much you can do with variants there. So using the guys with the shell jackets, the Confederates, uh, having the blanket rolls go the other way adds a little bit difference. The gates are different, so uh, it was a price I was happy to pay, I think. I think that's, I think they look all right like that, so. This is a picture of a regiment formed up in companies, and you can see what I mean about all the muskets. They're not all together, they're not all identical like toy soldiers are. They're all sort of a little bit all over the place because everybody's different, everybody holds the guns a little bit different. An interesting note on this picture is the, the shades and colours of the trousers. Absolutely, I was absolutely surprised when I saw this photograph because every now and then you've got these guys in like really light trousers, you've got faded trousers, you've got dark trousers. So obviously where they were issued, the batch they were made in, the dyes they used, you know, you've, you've, you've got to look at these things. I personally have kept all my trouser colours the same, um, but it's something I may look at in the future. I may chuck in a couple of different blue trousers and see how they look. I don't, don't know whether it would look right or whether you just mispainted them, that's the problem. I mean, I know this is a historical photo and these guys are actually real and here. Whether it would look like that on model soldiers, I don't know. Um, a couple of slouch hats in the ranks that I picked out. There's probably more, but obviously the, the photograph's not the best in the world. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I'll have more coming up. I'm doing, I've got some Zwarves done, Confederate Zwarves. Um, I've got some more cavalry painted. I've got the other five battalions of this brigade. I'll do a battalion video so you can see them all in, in formation. Um, and I've got the US sharpshooters painted, and some artillery that I've just finished off. So I will be posting more videos on the American Civil War in 28mm. And uh, if you like these, uh, please subscribe and like, and leave your comments below. Cheers.